Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video combining two tools that a lot of people typically see in opposition, Apache Kafka and Apache Flink. While many people see, you know, hey, I'm gonna use either one or the other, you know, Kafka and its stream processing, or you're gonna use Flink for your, your stream processing on its own, combined, they can actually be a lot more powerful than either of them in isolation. Kafka really is best as a message broker rather than a transformation engine. While there is Kafka streaming, it's not as powerful as Flink. And Flink is really powerful as a transformation engine uh, doing you know single record transformations, but isn't quite as good as a message broker. So what I'm gonna show you here is how you can combine them together to use both for what they're best at. So we're gonna use Kafka as our first line message broker, collecting information in this case around transactions. And then we're gonna use Flink to analyze those transactions in real time. So this is kind of an extension of a real life, you know, real time fraud detection pipeline. But really you can substitute out that fraud detection piece for whatever kind of row by row, real time streaming as transformations you're trying to accomplish. Um, I just chose that because it's the most common use case for real-time streaming is when you want to do that real-time analysis, real-time fraud detection. So without further ado, we'll get started building our Kafka producer, and then we'll go and set up our Flink script to actually process the data. So first thing we're gonna do is get started with our Kafka file. So let's call this Pi Kafka producer. We're gonna use the Python Kafka interpreter. Save this and then start building our Kafka file. So here, first thing we're gonna do is import a series of different connection or different requirements. So the Pi Kafka Kafka client, so we can run Kafka. Um, JSON for interacting with and handling JSON response data. Random, just because we're gonna do some randomization just to simulate transactions. Time, so we can handle a time object and date time for similar reasons. Then the next thing we'll do is actually define our Kafka client and our Kafka topics. So here, our Kafka client host just hosting it on my local host on port 9092, and then just setting the topic, uh, transactions, and just setting that as my global topic. Then what I'm gonna do is define just two different functions. So one to generate <coughs> random transaction data um, with just some additional fields. So here you have just for basically create an account ID first. So if account if a row doesn't have an account ID, which when you're creating one, it's not going to. Um, so this prevents duplicates. And then what you'll do here is it's going to return a random integer for the transaction ID, account ID, the amount in the transaction, the timestamp of the transaction, um, the location. So just randomly choosing between New York, LA, San Francisco, Chicago, or Atlanta. Um, random device ID and random status. So I've been, you know, just kind of a random simulation you could pull from dummy data, but I just like doing random simulations because it gives you better control over what kind of data you're actually working with. And then the second function that I'm gonna create here is then going to be a function to actually produce this, these transactions to a Kafka topic. So here, what I'm going to do is define loop. So produce transactions, say with the uh, topic I define here, so the transactions topic as the producer topic. We are going to send, while this is true, so this is just going to be a steady state function that until I tell it to turn false, it's going to just generate a burst of transactions from the same account. Um, so here, and this is just going to keep ran, keep iterating over this and keep producing transactions, keep generating regular transactions. Um, so here you have a random account integer creating for that and then going for that account integer uh, creating a burst of five to 10 transactions, then calling that generate transaction function for a given account ID, making sure it doesn't already exist, so it doesn't overwrite anything, and then here producing, giving these you know different random attributes that we've assigned here, producing that to a transaction object, and then sleeping to just simulate a delay there, um, and then otherwise just generating regular single transactions. So basically this will alternate between generating bursts of transactions and also just single transactions for given accounts, um, and then produce these and dump them into a JSON format. And then you're gonna see this is produced there. And basically just sleeping um, on a regular basis and going to keep producing 
transactions as long as you have this Python script running. So to trigger it, all you're gonna do is just go Python, uh, or actually just go up here. So run PyKafka, um, it's not ready to go yet, so not running it yet, but that's basically all you need to do to actually get started running your script. Then, so we have our Kafka producer set up. Next thing is to actually set up our Flink script to consume this data and process it and analyze it for fraud. So what we'll do here is go at create a new file, pyflink, or actually yes, do pyflink plus kafka.py. Save this. So here, what we're going to do first, similarly, is set up all of our different packages and requirements. So bring in essentially just a bunch of different pyflink data objects. So our pyflink data stream, to create a stream execution environment, we're actually do the processing. Flink, Kafka, consumer and producer to interact with that Kafka script producer. Then we have just a simple string schema, time, just define different data types and data types for that purpose as well. Then we also have a process window function and key process function. This is again how we're going to define our functions that are getting applied to data as it is being generated from that producer topic. And then we have this output tag to better organize the outputs of our data. So once we have all that in there, then we're going to set uh, some just fraud detection rule thresholds. So here, these are gonna determine how we evaluate if a transaction is fraudulent or not. So the amount threshold, $5,000 or over, and a high frequency threshold, so if there's more than five transactions at a time. Then we're also going to just, uh, add some side output tags. So these are going to basically be a tag to transactions that don't meet the threshold for uh, fraudulent, but might be suspicious. So just kind of showing you the different ways that you can call out and organize data via PyFlink. Then what we're gonna do is build a transaction data model. So here, what we're essentially just doing <coughs> is replicating that data model we created within Kafka. So just defining the different fields that make up each individual transaction. So the ID, amount ID, amount, timestamp, location, device ID, and status. And then just returning that to a dictionary. Um, so that's what you, if you want to have a data type within PyFlink or this kind of more complex object, you'll need to define it as a class. And then the next thing we'll do is define a class that's going to define actually our pro detection process function. So here, this is what we're going to be using to actually process for fraud detection. So just bringing in a, a list of transactions and the location count to know where that transaction is so you can keep track. Then what it's going to do is for every transaction, flag any transactions that are over that fraud amount threshold. If there's a higher transaction count greater than that high frequency threshold, and then if there's multiple locations in a short time period, which is potentially suspicious, but not outright suspicious. So that's what we're going to, instead of just adding that to uh, the fraudulent transactions, we're going to add it to that suspicious side tag. Ad additionally, we're going to add the multiple failed transactions as another suspicious tag here as well. Not an outright failure, but if you keep failing transactions, it's not the best sign in the world for uh, it not being a fraudulent transaction. So now that we have our fraud detection logic set up, we'll then need to initialize a Flink environment. So here, env equals stream execution environment dot just get execution environment, just creating a Flink execution setup and then defining our Kafka configuration. So Flink knows where to look for that Kafka server and the group ID, the topic to actually read from there. Then we're also gonna define a Flink Kafka consumer. So this is what's going to be actually reading in from Kafka um, and you know, reading and taking that data, deserializing it into a simple string schema using that function we imported from Flink earlier. This is how we're actually getting the data from that Kafka topic. And then what we're going to do is add that source to our environment. So here we have transactions adding the source as consumer, Flink Kafka consumer. And this is going to have the effect of taking the data that's being produced from that Kafka topic and bringing it into my Flink execution environment so I can start to transact or start to process it. But before I do that, I'm going to need to map the data that I'm bringing that raw data to that transactions object that I created. So that's what I'm doing here adding all this raw data from that dictionary into this transactions object so then I can use it for Flink. And then applying the fraud detection to that transaction class. So here going through that transaction class and then here using a time window 
And this is also where you get to use some of those advanced Flink capabilities of say, hey, I want to analyze, you know, these transactions over the past minute, or you know, I want to make sure that this is just in time transaction because Flink will actually take a record of when each transaction appeared and process it in that order as well. Um, so this is where you're creating that process window function and then applying that extended fraud <coughs> fraud detection process. Additionally, we're going to set the side output for suspicious transactions here. So here, flag transactions are going to be put into this side output. And then we're going to have a Kafka producer for flag transactions. So this is if you know now downstream, taking our transform data and actually making it available as a producer object so that you can load this into a backend database or whatever the end destination is. So creating a flag producer, producer for uh, fraudulent data and then a suspicious producer for suspicious data and then here we're going to then actually assign those to their various objects so here you have your flag producer for that array that has all the flag transactions and a suspicious producer so adding that sync as well so then if you want to add any other sources that are going to produce from this or consume from this you can use Kafka as a broker or another source and then all we need to execute this and run it, run it is just end execute extended fraud detection job and boom. Now you have a complete Flink and Kafka workflow running out of the box. Um, so you can use both for exactly what they're best at. Um, so I hope you've learned something today. I hope you had a good time watching this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.